Welcome to Mr. Bogoma's 10 Ready U.S. History Must Knows. We're looking at Standard 3 on the Compromise of 1877. Now, the Compromise of 1877 has to do with the events following the American Civil War. Uh, the South had been defeated and the South was now occupied by federal troops to make sure that they abided by the new laws and amendments passed by Congress, such as the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. And they're also in the South to protect African Americans who are uh, citizens of the country. They've been emancipated from slavery. So Southerners are very resentful of losing the war. They're very resentful that African Americans are have the same rights as uh, white Southerners. So there's going to be a big election in 1876 between Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tilden of New York, the Democrat nominee. And it's an incredibly close election. And there's a lot of controversy about who wins involving electoral votes in several states where uh, both Republicans and Democrats claim there's uh, voter suppression and uh, fraud involving uh, votes and there's no clear winner and there's this fear that the United States will descend back into some sort of civil war or, uh, or violent uh, situation. So Congress has to get together to decide the winner of this big landmark election of 1876 and the fate of Reconstruction kind of hangs in the balance. And what happens is the Republicans uh, get the presidential candidate to win. They get Rutherford B. Hayes. So Samuel Tilden loses the election. So if it's a compromise, what are the Democrats going to get if they don't get the president? Well, they get the troops removed from the military districts in the South. So we have here our map showing the military districts of in the South following the, the American Civil War. And so without troops in the South, Reconstruction ends and Southerners are able to start implementing new laws to repress African-Americans known as Jim Crow laws. They're going to start using more violence towards African-Americans to, to suppress them from gaining their uh, equality and constitutional rights because there's no federal troops in the South anymore to protect them. And there's going to be all sorts of uh, ways that southern states intimidate African Americans to keep them from voting. Because most African Americans in the South were voting Republican because Abraham Lincoln was a Republican and he had emancipated them from slavery. So they do things like poll taxes where they uh, charge you to vote. And so many African Americans who had been freed from slavery had no money, so they couldn't afford to vote. So that was a way of disenfranchising them, keeping them from having their constitutional rights and keeping them from voting, which is one of your most important duties as an American citizen. So these Jim Crow laws are gonna be legally allowed by the United States in a huge Supreme Court case known as Plessy versus Ferguson, where the Supreme Court says that Southern states can segregate their societies as long as they're separate but equal. So that's the big Supreme Court case that comes out of the end of Reconstruction. So a lot of African Americans in the South want to leave. We talked about westward expansion in Standard 1. There's a lot of land out west, opportunity, and it offers an escape from the violence occurring in the South. So Benjamin Papp Singleton, a former slave from Nashville organizes a group known as the Exodusters who head out west and build communities away from these the this segregation and, and racial violence that's occurring uh, in their former communities. Let's look at the, our EOC questions. Which statement best explains how the Electoral College controversy during the Hayes-Tilden presidential election of 1876 was resolved? Well, we talked about how it ended Reconstruction by removing uh, federal troops from the South in exchange for Hayes to become president. So if we look at our answer choices, we know that it shouldn't have anything to do with Samuel Tilden becoming president. And it has nothing to do with immigration reform. It has everything to do with 
ending reconstruction so that Hayes can be president. So that's why it was a compromise. And then our second question in the late 1800s, the Supreme Court decision in Plessy versus Ferguson. This is a vocab question. You have to know Plessy versus Ferguson to get this question right. So you need to make sure you have strong uh, historical vocabulary. So Plessy versus Ferguson is about segregation. So none of these answer choices discuss segregation except answer G. So that is it for standard three.